Singapore is a country known for being a cosmopolitan city, promoting multiculturalism and multiracialism. The irony is that in recent years, there have been many events and issues brought about regarding discrimination against Singapore and the prospect of over-reliance on foreigners. One of the main talking points in recent years has been the use of foreign talent in the Singapore Nationals competition. Singapore Foreign Talent Scheme, introduced in 1993 by the Singapore Table Tennis Association, is a scheme where sports organizations in Singapore scout and bring in foreigners deemed possess sports talent to represent Singapore in sporting competitions. This has seen Singapore bring in some of the world's best talents primarily in table tennis. In the World Team Table Tennis Championships final, Singapore created history by beating China 3-1, winning the goal. However, the irony is that the team fielded by Singapore consists of China-born players and this sparked major controversy among Singaporeans. Some Singaporeans claim that the Singapore Table Tennis team is merely a second China team and these players were merely sporting mercenaries employed by the Singapore government to play for Singapore. However, Singapore Table Tennis Association President Lee B. Wah had said that we should not look at foreign-born table tennis players differently on the basis that they are not born and brought up in Singapore. She emphasised that the important thing was the foreign players embracing Singapore, wanting to be part of Singapore and winning medals for Singapore. In another instance of controversy, almost half of the Singapore national football team are currently also foreigners under the foreign talent scheme. In the 2011 World Cup qualifier, Singapore played against Malaysia and won with an aggregate scoreline of 60 to 4. All six goals scored by Singapore were from naturalized players. In the wake of Malaysia's defeat, Malaysian captain Safiq Rahim criticized Singapore by insisting that Singapore had nothing without their five naturalized players, claiming that Singapore was over reliant on them. Singapore's naturalized players such as Chu Lee and Alexander Dirich played an instrumental role in Singapore's victory over Malaysia. However, Singapore football coach Radi Avramovic insists that there was nothing wrong with selecting naturalized players to play for Singapore if they ultimately improved the standard of Singapore football. We now seek opinions and insights from two experienced local coaches on the foreign talent policy in Singapore sports. Okay, but here was the uh, Olympic champion, right? People in the Delhi Dama, right? What happened to her now? She won so much money, she won so many trophies, she went back. She said, no matter how much they thought they to, to go down to play to, for the country, for the nationalistic purpose, there is no in, strong incentive for your lifelong you know, career. You can play for a while, after that, thank you very much. I got my own to, my career to look after. Nobody can look after you, you know? In Singapore, you have to work. If you don't have work, you're not going to survive. Previously, Walter Polo had a, had a scheme where they brought one or two players from China in. Now they don't have Some of them do uh, increase the level of the, of the game. Like for example, he was brought in. He was brought in from China. For him to come in and play with us, we feel that it expose ourselves more to the uh, international level of the game. Uh. The policy of bringing in foreign talent must come uh, with a clear direction and a clear plan of what they want to do with it. Uh. If they are just like, for example, like table tennis, 90% of the team is like from China, then the whole purpose obviously is to win a match. It's not to raise the standard of the game or not to help, not really to help the locals who are keen to play table tennis, who are keen to get into the team. So for me, I think if the policy comes with a strong uh, objective of improving the level or standard of play here, then by all means. But if they're just bringing in people here, you know, just win medals, then in a sense it's very difficult to, to get behind these sportsmen and say, hey, yeah, Singapore, the team Singapore, that kind of thing. Like the foreign talent scheme has brought about doubts as to the national pride and faith in Singapore's own local sportsmen. Instances such as China born thrower Dong En Sing, who had gone absent without official leave in 2007, have raised serious questions with regard to the loyalty of such foreign born players. Why should Singapore hold these foreign players in such high regard when they have no qualms about leaving? The Singapore government's over-reliance on foreign talent in the quest for glory has sparked major controversy. 
with Singaporeans beginning to lose faith in the Singapore government's decision and the FTS itself. Singaporeans may eventually lose interest and pride in the country's sporting achievement should if they no longer feel any affinity with the national sporting teams. This will be a disastrous outcome to Singapore's bid to cultivate a world-class sporting hub. For a start, the Singapore government should strive to fully win back the belief of Singaporeans that the government has faith in their own local talent. Singapore Table Tennis Association President Lee B. Wah had done well in fighting for a place for young talent Singaporean peddler Isabel Lee in the SEA Games. On hindsight, prior to the Youth Olympic Games of 2010, Singapore had to train local judo students in the sport of wrestling to compete. The YOG had refocused Singapore on its young local talent. The growing number of programs and opportunities that seek to develop the many sport potentials within Singapore shows that we are on the right track and surely over time, the reliance on foreign players will decrease as the standard of Singapore sports increase. To quote a fellow blogger, let the genuine pride of winning return and let sports unite all Singaporeans, regardless of colour, race and religion, like it once was. I miss the days of Fandi Ahmad, C. Kunalan and Juni Singh, and I have not had that pride for a long time since. Let Singaporeans strive to achieve such days of national sporting pride again.